Hello and welcome to Drilling Insight. I'm Jeremy Verdusco, host and editor of National Driller Magazine. I'm joined today by drilling trainer, National Driller writer, and co-host Brock Yordi. Welcome, Brock. Hey, thanks, Jeremy. I'm really excited today. I got one of my favorite bosses in the world on the line with us. Excellent. Well, uh, uh, as he says, uh, on today's show, we have uh, Charlie Cunningham. Thanks for being on the show, Charlie. Hey, you're welcome. Pleasure. Now, uh, Charlie is director of sales at VacuWorks, a manufacturer of lifting uh, materials, lifting equipment. But he has plenty of sales leadership experience in the drilling industry, including at a major rig manufacturer. We wanted to bring him on to talk about equipment manufacturing, uh, changing customer de demands, and the what the future of drilling might look like. Let's jump into our usual opening question. Did you choose the industry or did the industry choose you, Charlie? Well, I actually it chose me. Um, I, my background is agriculture. I grew up on a family farm in East Tennessee and went to university and anyway, after uh, deciding I didn't want to stay in the family business, I uh, started work for a company, um, moved back to East Tennessee as my parents were getting older after several years in that industry, um, and, and actually met the president of Aztec Underground uh, probably 20 years ago, and that's how it started. So it chose me. Uh, Charlie, I got a two-parter for you. Uh, you said you met the president at Aztec. Uh, I think that's a pretty neat story. Uh, what was your first sales job, and how did you end up being a sales manager? Hmm. Well, uh, on the family farm, we uh, we had a dairy farm, plus we had uh, everything else you can imagine here in East Tennessee, beef, tobacco. Uh, Dad also had a buying company for cattle, uh, and my job was uh, early on, I was probably 15 or 16 helping there. And then as I got a little older, I was actually the one that did a lot of the buying and selling. So it first started here on the farm through the cattle company, uh, buying and selling. And, uh, and then it went on from, um, I, I left, went with Tennessee Farmers Co-op in the early 80s, got on their management training program. And so, but it all started, most everything I've learned is uh, right here on the farm from my dad and grandfather. Charlie, how'd you meet the president of uh, Aztec and end up being in sales there? Well, I had uh, left uh, Tennessee Farmers Co-op and uh, I'd met the uh, ownership of the Dale Carnegie franchise in Nashville. And uh, I started working with Dale Carnegie in the middle Tennessee area and he expanded or brought, bought territory franchise in East Tennessee. So my parents were getting, uh, well, my dad was not well at that time. So I came back to East Tennessee to, uh, to help out and, uh, and also help op open office with Dale Carnegie here in Knoxville. So uh, I'd met the folks at Mercedes Benz to talk about training for them. Uh, and it turns out that the sales manager grew up on a dairy farm uh, next county south of me. Uh, the, the general manager was actually had a farm in our own county and uh, was a family friend. Didn't even know that when I first went there. So after a discussion, I ended up going to work at Mercedes Benz of Knoxville and uh, selling Mercedes Benz. Uh, and then the new president of Aztec Underground uh, came here to the Knoxville area and uh, he actually moved back over from uh, uh, Holland. So anyway, he was staying in an extended stay hotel across the street from the dealership and we met. I sold he and his wife from Mercedes. And then just by crazy, we ran into each other a few months later. Uh, he showed me through the plant and uh, introduced me to the uh, vice president and he asked me uh, what kind of tractors we had on the farm. And I said, John Deere, and he said, you're hired. So that's, that's how that all started. So he basically said, well, you know, if you can sell me a Mercedes, you can definitely sell anything we have. 
And I still remember he said that, uh, he said, you, you sold me different. You, you actually um, took your time, you asked questions, and he says it was just a business transaction. It mm-hmm. wasn't an emotional high pressure selling. And he said, and it's funny how things work out. Uh, you know, we parted, well, he, he, he left and went to, and, and I did too. I, I had three different jobs at three different companies with Aztec. But uh, it's funny, I'm working with him again now at VacuWorks uh, for a few months before he retires. It came so full we, circle. It, we have. It's uh, career-wise and, and actually, yeah, my whole life is sort of a, a big circle. At least that's the way it seems to be heading. Yeah. So, so when it comes to uh, kind of closing the deal on these uh, – you know, big pieces of equipment or, you know, big attachments like you're doing now. Uh, what kind of sales tools are you using to close that deal? Like what's your, your uh, uh, I don't know, trade secret, I guess. Well, if I told you it wouldn't be a secret anymore. <laughs> but uh, no, I'll, I'll tell you what works for me. It uh, is, is, Brock, you refer to some of my rules. Uh, you know, some of the, the just common sense rules is big, genuine. Uh, certainly, you ask a lot of questions. You know, there's a saying that uh, uh, nobody uh, cares how much you know till they know how much you care. Uh, and you do that by being sincerely interested in their business, asking questions, <clears throat> responding to that. And uh, I've always told my people, you know, when I was selling uh, big track trenchers, rock trenchers, you know, they cost a million dollars and up that nobody wants to buy a trencher, but they all need a trench for their job. So we're selling a tool. So keep in mind, you have to provide value for what you're selling. Uh, And and there's a real need. So it's, uh, you know, most everything I've sold in life, even when I was doing the Dale Carnegie, Mm -hmm. which is intangible, you're, you're selling a training, an idea, you know, there's still needs there. There's, there's needs there for people to uh, better themselves, uh, to communicate better, uh, all sorts of reasons. So, so you really have to truly believe in what you're doing, that you're there and offering real value in, in solving a problem or offering uh, a needed solution for people. Mm-hmm. But uh, that, that's a long way to answer how, how I start my background. And of course, I think you, you sell – when it comes to, to the big CapEx, uh, you, you basically work as a team. You know, not one of us is probably smart enough to have all the answers. Um, so Brock, you've seen this many times. We'll bring in an expert. Uh, it could be someone like yourself uh, with, uh, that knows the hydrology, it, uh, and very likely an engineer that can answer questions. Uh, because most people's job and they, whether it is or isn't, they think that it's probably unique or something they do is a little bit unique. So, and that's okay. It, it could be. So that's, that's it. Work as a team. Don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. Um, and and be, admit when you're wrong and admit when you don't know something, but work to find the people that do or get the answers. Um, that's what I would say. Charlie, I've had the pleasure of working with you in Oklahoma and on some big equipment and different projects. And uh, you, as a, a young professional in this industry, you've given me different tools along the ways. What's your latest or what's your favorite go-to sales tool for professional development? Hmm. Well, it's changed over the years. Uh, you know, used to, I, I, everybody I hired, I gave them the, the little red book of selling. It was excellent. Uh, yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's simple to read. It's, you can pick it up and read it anytime. Uh, and, and over the years, I still do that. Uh, however, now, um, with technology, we're, we're finding uh, uh, webinars, podcasts. Uh, you know, Brock, you were a great one for listening as you traveled to, to books and things. Uh, you know, I, I've... Uh, and I think based on the season of life we're in or what we're experiencing, it, it changes probably what we need, what our needs are and what we're doing. I've been reading some books about uh, 
um, management structures and uh, how, how people work through uh, uh, tearing down the silos and, you know, doing away with the politics. So it just, you know, I, I'd say always, always be reading and studying. So, you know, and I even referred to, uh, uh, Julie Hansen does some webinars and Brock, you remember one year that I said, uh, we, we took off, sort of spun off one, one of her articles about being a professional. I said this year, you know, sell like a professional, the way we talk, the way we dress, present ourselves, uh, how we value the, our customer's time. Anyway, we, we did a lot to think about that. And it, so there's a lot of good resources available. Of course, it all, you know, you want to hear the, the master, the original of it, go to Dale Carnegie. You know, some of the things written, uh, you know, how many years, almost 100 years ago are still, uh, still apply today. Yeah, Carnegie is, uh, is kind of timeless. It's, it, it, you know, people are going to keep turning to it and turning to it. Um, mm -hmm. So... so Charlie, tell us a little bit about about VacuWorks. Uh, you know how 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 does a company like yours uh, potentially serve folks in an audience like ours? Mm -hmm. Well, our our business is all about uh, getting people out of harm's way, getting people out of areas they shouldn't be in. So it relates to to what you do or talk about in in every industry. Um, what we do, the we have a vacuum lifting system. Uh, of many models and, and we uh, lift from 1,700 pounds to over 90,000 pounds. But it's used and, and we really got uh, the company's 21 years old now and for years it's uh, really grown in the pipeline industry, oil and gas transmission lines uh, when they're offloading barges or trucks or rail cars. Um, you know, no more use of uh, uh, hooks, slings, and chains, getting people out of the, out of the way, uh, protecting the pipe when you're moving it. So you're eliminating uh, the need for people in dangerous positions. So any, anywhere there's, you're, you're moving tubulars or even uh, possibly some of your people are doing demolition work occasionally. You know, we, we have lifters, we can pick up concrete slabs or road plate. So they we're finding endless uses uh, and opportunities now, especially the last few months, what we've seen more interest coming from the manufacturing sector. I think some companies uh, possibly have had some slowdowns. They're looking at improving efficiency, making a safer work environment. So we're quite busy um, going into manufacturing facilities now to analyze how they're moving the raw materials or finished goods yeah. and coming up with a safer, more efficient way to handle that. So, so when it comes to, you know, when we talk about materials handling, is, is that the big difference between uh, what VacuWorks provides and other methods like, you know, mechanical, hydraulic, you know, like you said, the chains, uh, hooks, what have you? Well, it is. That's, uh, you're eliminating the need to put people in dangerous position. And, uh, you know, I eliminating accidents I, everybody wants to make sure either yourself your family members or your employees um, are safe and safely return home to their families yeah for and sure. Brock and I have both been part of a company that uh, you know had some tragic accidents and that that is not good um, and of course recently we we had a customer talk about uh, they had just a subcontractor on their job that got injured uh, and the, what it did to their insurance premium, that the person recovered, but still because of the accident, their insurance premiums went up four times that year. Uh, so that's significant when you're talking about a small business and uh, trying to become more efficient and contain cost when, when, when accidents happen, they're, they're costly in many ways. Yeah, the big, the big safety policies right now with any major construction company or like the pipeline stuff Charlie talks about, you know, uh, suspended loads and either caught in, in between or struck by when you're lifting loads. And so to have an alternative of somebody not needing to go and attach something and being able to, you know, 
basically attach it without putting a body there first is uh, yeah. very important. Charlie, my question, um, you've, you've done trench, you've done Mercedes and cattle and trenchers and uh, American augers and uh, underground equipment and drill rigs and oil and gas equipment and fracking equipment. You've, you've seen a myriad of it all. How has the relationship changed between um, manufacturing and sales and how you get that sale done, like the life cycle of the sale? And then when, when people look to repurchase and all of this time, you have so many different aspects to think about there. How has that relationship changed in say the last five years? Well, I think uh, relationships maybe haven't changed the need to, uh, stay connected or connected quicker and better has increased. Um, you know, certainly I started selling before there were cell phones and there weren't fax machines. Um, so, you know, you're making long distance calls and uh, personal visits. Um, so, so the need to stay connected and people expect an answer is really quick now. Um, so, You've got to continue to touch your customers. Uh, you know, you talk about it, when you sell a large CapEx, a, a million dollar drill rig, or the largest sale I've probably single sale I ever had was nearly 20 million. Um, you know, you still, uh, sometimes the sale cycle is longer, but you still don't expect to sell them today uh, and not have a relationship and expect them to come back to see you in five years. You just can't take that for granted. Um, now, I even learned that at Mercedes. Um, you know, I make that make that a special occasion. Uh, like some people call it a rose moment. Uh, you know, what makes yourself set yourself apart from someone else? You know, we would sell a family a, a Mercedes and uh, take their picture with it. Uh, a month later, they would get a copy, another copy of a picture. They would get letters. They, they would get you stay, you just stay in touch because one of the uh, earliest trainers I ever remember uh, talked about uh, a Cadillac dealership in Texas called Carl Sewell Cadillac. Mm -hmm. and, and they talk about that ever growing customer experience from, from the time the customer first walks in until they leave and how you stay in touch. And, and I'll never forget, forget that because they said, you don't treat it as a transaction. You, you treat it, forever. So that customer that came in and bought a Cadillac today in their lifetime between them and their family and friends, you know, who knows how many, I, I don't remember all the, but I do remember the, uh, the moral of the story, so to speak, mm -hmm. is that you got to look at the big picture long-term. So, you know, beyond sales, obviously you work with a, a manufacturer. So, what, what are some of the big challenges for manufacturers in 2020? I mean, not, obviously we have COVID-19, but what are some of the other things that you're, you're dealing with uh, today? Yeah, the obvious was what you just mentioned, COVID, but what it's done, it's affected, uh, it's a chain reaction. It's affected all the way uh, upstream uh, some of our uh, vendors, uh, lead times of it. Um, stretched out. Uh, some may have, uh, they're asking for, for terms that uh, they didn't use to. So cash flow is, is big. Uh, keeping your people employed uh, when the work sometimes slows down or it's not as predictable as it once was. Yeah. Um, we, we serve, uh, uh, you know, a large, the greatest percentage of our business comes from the oil and gas sector. Um, Certainly, the uh, highs and lows in that industry affect us. So I, I'd say, in general, everybody in manufacturing, as, as you always do, uh, it's, it's not a steady stream. You have the highs and lows, and you have to be able to adapt quickly. And, uh, and sometimes, well, we were lucky. We were already in the process, uh, Evacuum Works, of buying a machine shop. So we're actually doing more of our own machining than we were two years ago. So that's been a great help. We've had to vert vertically uh, integrate, so to speak, mm -hmm. to, uh, to help offset some of the shortages that we've seen. So, 
being able to adapt. This is a great segue because here we are virtual doing this uh, podcast and video. How is your team utilizing the virtual sales tactics to be able to continue to maintain sales while we're, we're staying at home or not able to travel as effectively? Well, you know, I'm, I, I can tell you what we're doing. Sometimes I wonder how effective we are doing it. Uh, but we all learned how to do Zoom calls like this. Uh, and I started with my sales team uh, during, starting in March, I think, uh, it was every day we had a Zoom call amongst ourselves. We, and I start the Zoom call with, uh, give, me, give me a good news story. I, I want them to be positive. I want them to be having some good news to talk about. Then we talk about the other things. Uh, what not always so good or what we can do or what each other's doing. And we've actually uh, changed our sales structures, not just outside sales team, but now we brought in uh, parts. We have a rental department. We have a sales coordinator. Uh, we call it the customer care team. So uh, and, and internally, we call it VacuWorks Cares. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing amongst ourselves is a start. And then what we've learned there, we've taken that to our customers. And so we've done some Zoom training with customers. Our uh, marketing group is doing some online training where you go to. Uh, actually, uh, the customer will read this. It'll be a short uh, few questions. They can pass or fail. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, there, there's a lot of more online learning being done. So our, our marketing group, uh, as well as the sales group, has been quite busy. Mm -hmm. uh, like a few months to do so. Uh, but yeah, long term, I guess we wonder how relationships with customers are. Certainly, even our good customers for a time, if we, when we weren't traveling, uh, they weren't seeing anybody. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think people still value that relationship. Uh, it's certainly easier if we were the three of us or however many sitting around in person doing this, we would probably. You could read the body language. We could, you know, it's easier to communicate. But I think yeah. we're all learning. Uh, the other thing I did was actually um, there was a few podcasts or webinars about how to do more, be more effective um, virtually. Mm -hmm. So I had our guys go to that and, and do that. So we're still learning to answer your question. But, uh, yes, there's quite a bit more. I've got a meeting this afternoon with um, with a possible sales uh, agent in one part of the country mm -hmm. we've talked on the phone and uh, but anyway that's one of those things i love meeting people in person it's how you communicate the best but uh second best is the way we're doing it now so. yeah yeah and that's that's i think how you know that you were you were kind of made to do sales when you <laughs> when you look forward to that kind of interpersonal interaction um, you know, I'm an editor. I hide behind, I hide behind the keyboard if I can. Yeah. So, Charlie, sales is a great, oh, great ahead. profession. You know, it's just uh, meeting people. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, has um, how is VacuWorks outside of the U.S.? Tell us a little bit about selling into markets beyond beyond uh, U.S. borders here. What are you guys mm -hmm. doing? We, we have a, a location in Australia uh, near Brisbane and we do some light manufacturing there mm -hmm. and we have a small staff there that serves Australia, uh, South, Southeast Asia from that location. Yeah. Uh, we've got another presence in uh, the Netherlands. Okay. Uh, and uh, so we've got in other parts of the country, we have uh, sales agents, uh, someone working on our behalf and I uh, can't say every country, but uh, many of the, uh, in many places we do, we have uh, one person that's actually on our payroll in Latin America. He uh, lives in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, he covers Venez, uh, Latin America. And, uh, but again, we still have in most countries, in Latin America especially, sales agents that uh, work for us. Okay. So all the manufacturing does not happen in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Some of it is uh, is done in other places, whether it be uh, Europe or or Australia. Yeah. 
So you've given me a lot of good advice over the years and, uh, you know, I've appreciated the mentorship. Um, here's your spot right now. The young professionals that are coming into equipment sales or sales. I loved what you just said about relationships and, uh, making new friends. Uh, what advice would you give this, uh, this new class of salesmen coming out? I, I would say start humble. Um, you know, too many people uh, think, uh, well, and I can talk about my own children. So I'm not, I'm not going to talk about yours, Brooke. <laughs> but, you know, they, they think they know more than, than we do. Uh, that's probably not the case. They know uh, some things that we don't know. I grant you that. Uh, but I, I say start humble and, and start small. Um, learn from other people. You know, you have to have mentors in life. Everybody does. You know, I, you know, Brock, some of the things I've said over the years, most of them are probably not original. You know, it's my dad or grandfather or Leroy Jethro Gibbs or somebody, <laughs> uh, you know, has said that. You know, I've, I've, I've got stacks of books and, you know, Sam Houston said this and Andrew Jackson said this. And, but, boy, there's some, you know, there's some great mentors uh, living and dead that we can learn from. Uh, the other thing is, is keep learning. You know, no professional, uh, no college team, no athlete, no marathon runner really gets to their peak by sitting around and just showing up on race day. So that's the same is true in our profession. You have to practice and to be good at what you do. Um, now, being honest and genuine should be natural, could be just common sense but it's not, but the other parts being a good listener, uh, you know, a term that I've used over the years, sell like Columbo, you ask questions after question. And uh, so that, that's what I would say. Just, just keep practicing because on game day, it's too important to just to show up. It's, you don't waste your customer's time. You have to be ready. Hey, I got a short story to tell if I have time. Years ago, I had a salesman, uh, this is when I was in uh, working farmers co-op in ag supply business. I had a salesman called on a farmer, um, and and I I don't even know if I knew he was going. Well, I knew he was going somewhere that day, but but a few weeks later, I got an invoice in the mail. The farmer sent me an invoice for this salesperson wasting his time. So I've I've told that story over and over again. So I always have an intent. Uh, you know, always go with the purpose in mind. And, and not always do you go with the intent, I'm going to make a sale today, but I'm going to move the process a little bit longer. I'm going to find out more what their needs are and what their hesitations are. Anyway, solving problems. Be humble, but keep practicing. And also uh, practice doing it right. So, Charlie, my last question, uh, I've loved the stories and everything that you've been able to bestow on me and many other good salesmen throughout this industry. All right, so you've done Farmers Co-op, you've sold Mercedes, you've sold big oil and gas rigs, frackers, you're doing vacuum work stuff right now. Where are you going next? What do you, what, what's your plans? You going to the moon? What's, uh, what's next? Well, it's funny you say that. We're actually building some lifters for uh... – for SpaceX, so maybe I might get a chance to go to the moon or somewhere. Uh, we'll see. But you know, I I, I have been blessed, uh, and uh, you know, and I've worked hard to get that. I I, I learned that uh, certainly growing up on the farm, uh, the work ethic. So, uh, but I, I think probably I, I've got a few more years to go. Uh, the wife and I came back and bought part of the family farm, and now I have a granddaughter. So uh, I think it's probably my job to start teaching her uh, a few of the things that, that I've learned and, and other grandkids to come. It's, it's funny, Brock. Uh, she came, she's two and a half years old, but she wants a big horse now. Uh, and she wants a gray horse. And anyway, it's, it's just, uh, and she, we, we got some little cowboy boots here. Anyway, she just calls them cow boots. So I think the next stage of my life, yeah, I'm going to, Keep working. I've got some more things to do. You know, I need to be able to afford the farm. So uh, I'll probably, 
I don't know that I'll go to the moon, but I, I'll, I've got some other places to go and see and do for sure. And, uh, you know, I want to I want to get through this, whatever we call this time 2020. I want to help bring us back into the, the better times. You know, for, for a lot of manufacturing companies, uh, sales professionals, uh, it's not been the best year. So we're going to work out of this and we're going to learn from this and uh, we'll, we'll be better for it in a few months. So. Great. Well, with that, we will wrap up today's episode. Uh, thanks again, Charlie. I, you know, I'm, as we're listening to you talk, I'm struck by, uh, really struck by your humility, even early on when we asked about teams, you were busy crediting everyone else and talking about how, um, you know, you live to serve. And I think that's a great attitude and it's a great uh, attitude for a salesman in particular to have. Uh, Brock, what, what did you think? Uh, I enjoyed it. That's why I, I lost my place on where our next question was, is uh, I used to have these moments with Charlie often in Oklahoma, and uh, he made me a better professional and slapped me around a little bit, told me to be patient, didn't take me to McDonald's and let me go or anything. So I, I enjoyed my morning. This was great. Thank you, Charlie. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, I've enjoyed working with you and, uh, and hope we stay in touch and you know, stop by in East Tennessee. I've got a spare bedroom and plenty of work to do. So, you know, you'll be right at home. <laughs> you can earn your keep. Well, uh, thanks again to Charlie Cunningham. Uh, where can the audience find out more about you, Charlie? Well, you can go to uh, VacuWorks, our website. Uh, my email is uh, charlieC at VacuWorks.com. And VacuWorks is spelled V A C. Make sure <laughs> P-A-C-U-W-O-R-X. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Well, uh, thanks again. And uh, remember, you can find fresh episodes of the show on our website or on Apple Podcasts every other week. Uh, just search for Drilling Insight and hit uh, subscribe. Uh, visit nationaldriller.com for the latest industry news and views and follow us on the usual social media channels. So uh, until next time, this is Drilling Insight.